$30,000 for wedding planning. I was like, sir, did you add an extra zero to this email? Because I'm confused. He's like, no, it's $30,000. I was like, oh no, $30,000 is someone's wedding budget. <laughs> to my channel if it's your first time here my name is Angela today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about everything wedding planning related so if you guys don't know I recently got engaged well not recently I got engaged last year September 22nd actually our engagement anniversary is coming up next week so yeah I got engaged September 22nd last year and it's been such an exhilarating feeling ever since then I've been planning our wedding and it's been so much fun however Wedding planning is not all peaches and cream. So if you wanna get into the nitty gritty, let's just get right into this video. So wedding planning has been such an exhilarating feeling. You know, I've been enjoying the journey of planning our wedding. However, there's a lot of hiccups that you do a phase along the way of wedding planning. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about everything that you need to know before you start planning your wedding. So when I started doing research on wedding planners, I found out a few things that I wasn't aware of. So first thing that I found out is you don't necessarily have to hire a wedding planner that's going to provide full wedding planning services. So most wedding planners, when you go on their websites, they do have three categories. So you have the option to hire the planner for full wedding services, and then you also have an option to hire them for partial wedding planning. So that's not fully planning your wedding, but just coming in when needed. And then the third option is a day of coordinator so the person the planner comes in the day of the wedding and just handles logistics those are three things that you can consider when thinking of hiring a wedding planner and also it helps a lot if your budget is really slim because I know full wedding planning packages can be a little bit extensive in terms of price so if you don't want to spend a lot of money on the wedding planner then you can just hire a day of coordinator and just you know handle the whole wedding planning process by yourself if you can handle the pressures of planning a wedding <laughs> so a wedding planner is out of the way so you know i did research on wedding planners and i was like you know what let me first hold on let me kind of do my own research as a bride and see what i want after i did that research then i revisited the whole wedding planner option When I was doing my research, I found out that there are major vendors that you have to book immediately because these vendors sell out like crazy. I'm telling you, there's some vendors I reached out to and they would say, oh, I'm already booked for that day. I mean, it's a year and eight months in advance and they're already booked. So those vendors are the photographer. You have to book your wedding photographer immediately, your videographer, your venue, your florist, and... Um, and your caterer so the venue the photographer the videographer the florist and the caterer so the person that's going to provide your food and your alcohol and all your drinks um those big five vendors are crucial you want to get those out of the way before you think of anything before you even think about your dress you want to make sure those five are secured you've booked them you've paid your deposits you're good to go so I found that out when I did my own research and I was like, okay, I need to get this out of the way. So I started looking for tools that would help me find the vendors that I would fall in love with, that we would fall in love with, Joey and I. So the first website that I found out about was The Wedding Wire. The Wedding Wire provides a whole bunch of options for you. It provides you with options for vendors so it has a whole bunch of vendors that you can select from it has a lot of planning tools that you can use to plan the wedding it has one thing that i liked about the wedding wire was the wedding forum so it has a wedding forum where a whole bunch of brides from everywhere in the country got come together and post questions and you know people answer those questions or they go there and respond to questions that brides to be have so it's a nice way to go in there and if you have a question that you can't find an answer to i guarantee you you will find it in that wedding forum so it's a nice way for you know brides and couples to connect and get answers wedding wire helped me a lot i mean i went there and i looked up a whole bunch of vendors the good thing i liked about that website is that it helps you 
kind of get to know the vendor virtually because you see a whole bunch of reviews from past clients that worked with them and those reviews really help you a lot. They do have pictures there, they do have their websites, they do have contact information and they also do have an option to chat with them. So if you have a question about their services, you can always just send them a message in the Wedding Wire app and they can always respond to you um, if you want them to instantly get back to you versus going to their website and waiting for them to get back to you. So it's a nice way to kind of get a feel for how your vendors will deliver and if you feel like their services will be something that you would like on your special day. So two things I liked about the Wedding Wire were the fact that I found all my vendors there um, and I also got the option to utilize their wedding firm to get any questions that I had answered. So the piece about vendors, one thing I also need to mention is that you get to, so once you select a vendor and you know you like them, you get in contact with them, they send you a contract, in the Wedding Wire website, you can go ahead and select the hired button. So every vendor you select hired, they put them in this category where I think it says my vendors. So it basically starts to plan a whole, the map for your whole wedding planning process. So you would categorize the vendors in this section and you'll say hired vendors and you'll have a list of all the vendors that you've hired so it's it's a nice way to keep track of you know all your vendors that you have and if you you know want to think about a vendor if you're still in the you know evaluating process you can also select that in, and you can categorize them in that option for evaluating evaluating vendors so it's really nice it's really neat it's very user friendly which is amazing.com so another website that I found super helpful during the whole wedding planning process was the knot.com. I love the knot because it has a whole bunch of tools as well. Just like the wedding wire, the knot has a variety of options for you to utilize while planning your wedding. One thing I liked about the knot is the variety of planning tools that it has. I did create a wedding website through the knot.com. I mean, the wedding wire has an option to create a wedding website, however, for me, it boiled down to the aesthetic of the website and I feel like the note had more options for me to choose from compared to the wedding wire. So I like that. I also like this planning tool that the note has where you get to put down all your vendors and how much they're charging you, the total price, how much you've deposited and how much the balance is. So it helps you budget well and helps you keep track of you know, your budget and making sure you're not going over budget and making sure you're staying within um, staying within what your means are. So one other thing that I utilize the note for is our wedding registry. So we're not having a traditional registry where we register at our retail store. We are having a honeymoon fund. So people are going to donate money to, not donate, I don't, I shouldn't say, I always say the word donate. It should, it's, no, not donate. People are going to contribute money to our honeymoon fund. And we're just gonna use that money towards either purchasing a house or towards our honeymoon. So that's always a cool option if you don't want to register at a retail store and you know have people buy you stuff and you don't know where you're gonna put them. I am the type of person that likes to visualize where things would be. So if I don't have a house where I'm going to put all these things that people are buying for us, then it's just pointless for me to ask people to buy stuff. So that's why we together um, decided on a honeymoon fund. So the note is really good for that resource. So don't be shy to go back and forth between both websites. You wanna make sure you find out the site that will basically make your pl wedding planning process smooth. You don't want to work with a website that has a lot of hustles. You want something that's user friendly. So try using both websites and see which one sticks the most and then work with that. I mean, like I said, with the wedding wire, it has some options that I liked and then same applies to the note. Now, another website that I found very helpful was The Wedding Spot. So The Wedding Spot is a website you go on when you're looking for wedding venues, which is a huge, huge vendor. Actually, that is the first vendor when you start wedding planning that you want to get out of the way, the venue, before you hit the other big four. Just get your venue out of the way because venues are expensive and venues sell out like this. I mean, it's crazy how you would go to a venue and they'll tell you, oh, we're already sold out for that day. So make sure you get your venue out of the way. And this website, The Wedding Spot, is so helpful. So you go in there and it asks you for your city and your state. So based on the city and state information that you give them, it'll give you options of venues to select from in that area. Now, 
finding a venue was really stressful i will say that for us um it was very stressful i got to a point where i just gave up i was like you know what i just can't find an affordable venue i mean they were very expensive i mean they were in the tens and thousands range so i was like there's no way um mm, there's just no way i'm gonna spend ten thousand dollars on a venue absolutely not <laughs> i like to spend my money where it's worth so i was like no the point where i i broke down and i was like i can't i'm i'm done i can't do this i found a venue it's crazy like i give up and i, I told joey i was like you know what i give up on finding venues and I would say my biggest hiccup with trying to find a venue was the fact that, and that's this is one thing you guys should keep in mind, almost every venue, if not most venues, they do have a preferred vendor list. So what that means is that they have a list of vendors that you are supposed to use if you book to have your event or your wedding at their venue. So you go there and they tell you this is our preferred list of vendors, they have a caterer on there, they have... Um, rental equipment from a company that you're supposed to use you know and the list goes down you have to use those vendors if you don't use those vendors you can't you can't book their venue and some venues have the option to book at the venue they have a preferred list of vendors if you don't want to use their vendors you pay an extra fee to bring your own vendor which can be costly i mean i would find the perfect venue and then i would see preferred list of vendors and it would just oh it would just kill me because I mean, you don't know these vendors, you could do research on them, but you know, you have a list of vendors that you feel very strongly about them and you just don't want somebody to impose a vendor on you because that's who they want you to use. They take into consideration liability issues, you know, you bring in a caterer, they don't know how they operate, you know, they break, they work in their kitchen and then they break something. And then, you know, that's something they have to deal with versus working with a, vent a caterer that they know well, they've worked with them for, on so many events and so... They feel comfortable enough to put them on their preferred list so they don't have to worry about you know how is this person going to be working on this day you know so that's the whole reason as to why they have these preferred vendor lists so anyways i found a venue finally after going through this craziness that i just told you joey and i walked in there and we were like yes this is it like we just fell in love with this venue we were like you know what this is going to be our venue. So we loved our venue. We booked it immediately. So we found our venue and we were happy thanks to Wedding Spot. So the Wedding Spot is amazing. Before going on the Wedding Spot, I was doing just random Google searches of venues in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. And I couldn't find anything. I really couldn't. And so I came across the Wedding Spot and then I came across our wedding venue and I was like, whoa, this is interesting. So... The point here is you can do a Google search on venues or any vendor and you don't find them. But if you go on these specific websites I'm telling you guys about, you have more options and a variety of vendors to look at. Those are three tools that I urge you guys to use. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. So after I found all these wedding vendors that Joey and I loved, we decided to start looking for a wedding planner. So we started looking for a planner and the first planner that I found... Why did I like her? I liked her because she wasn't charging a lot of money. And I was like, okay, this is good. It works for our budget. But then one thing I learned about trying to penny pinch is that you will be paying for that in the long run. And I say that because this planner we found, I loved, I liked her because of the price point, but then my gut was not all in. I mean, I wasn't like, oh, I'm like, I love a planner. I just didn't get that feeling. I kept going through a lot of uh, wedding planners, trying to find one that's, you know, the prices were reasonable and most of them were very expensive. I will say that. I actually remember talking to a planner who is based in DC and they were charging, how much were they charging? $30,000. $30,000 for wedding planning. I was like, sir, did you add an extra zero to this email? Because I'm confused. He's like, no, it's $30,000. I was like, oh no, $30,000 is someone's wedding budget. <laughs> okay, who is going, I was like, is this Hollywood? This is not Hollywood. I was like, do you have clients that pay $30,000 for wedding planning services? I wanna meet them. I need them to be my friends <laughs> because hell no, I am not paying you 30, what? No, I was like, oh, hell no. 
so anyways i keep going through planners i keep going through planners until i found our planner and i love her our planner is amazing she is she's so cool so anyways i found a planner and i told her basically what i had done on my own the research i had done with finding vendors and i gave her a list of all the vendors that i had found so it, this goes back to my point don't book a vendor because they're very cheap book a vendor because of the quality of their work okay they can be a little bit on the pricey side but their services are going to be exceptional and you're going to be happy in your big day Most vendors in the wedding planning business, they do charge either 25% or 50% of the final price for a deposit. That's just standard. One thing I also want to mention is don't be afraid to challenge your vendors. You know, if your vendors are trying to sell you something that's way out of your vision, you know, at the end of the day, they are working for you. So don't be afraid to tell them no. Don't be afraid to tell them this is how I want it or I don't agree with you and also don't be afraid to negotiate now you're not negotiating price you're negotiating the deposits you're negotiating how much of a percentage you want to put down as a deposit I did negotiate that for a lot of vendors a planner a photographer I did negotiate the deposit they wanted 50% I was like I'll give you 25 you know and it works because you're trying to secure a lot of deep a lot of vendors so if you're giving 50% here and 50% here you know, your money's going faster versus you, you know, giving smaller percentages and covering a lot of vendors, you know. So be not afraid to negotiate how much you want to deposit. Most vendors are willing to work with you. All my vendors were. So, yeah. So I think that's it that I wanted to cover with you guys when it comes to planning a wedding. I mean, make sure you do your research. I guarantee you it will be worth it it will pay off it is intense research when it comes to wedding planning if you are a meticulous person and you want everything to always be perfect and smooth aka me right here um i love my things to be to the t so your wedding planner is always going to be your middle person and so she will always relay whatever you tell her to your vendor now during that communication it's like playing telephone something is going to get lost in translation and that's one thing i didn't want to happen you know i i wanted to connect with those vendors and just talk to them and speak with them and tell them what i want and then we can be on the same page before i brought a planner into the whole mix so that's how i did it some people love to start off with a planner go for it if it works for you more power to you as for me you know the way i did it it just worked for us and it's been amazing ever since then so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I did a lot of talking. I'm literally choking. I hope this video was helpful and informative. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you loved it. Also, don't forget to hit the big red subscribe button. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.